Your eyes are organs that allow you to see. They take in light from the world around you and send visual information to your brain. Your eyes can see about 200 degrees in all directions, including in front of you and to the sides. Your eye is the shape of a ball that's slightly compressed. It's not quite a perfect sphere because it's a little more pointed in the front. And in adults, the eye is about one inch in diameter. Many conditions can affect how your eyes work, including common vision problems like myopia, astigmatism and eye injuries. To know which diseases can affect the eye, first we need to know what the eye consists of and how it works. The eye consists of many parts, including the iris, which is the colored area of your eye. Depending on your eye color, the iris might be any shade of blue, green, hazel, or brown. Cornea, a clear layer that extends over the iris. The cornea is made up of water and collagen. And your tears protect your cornea and keep it lubricated. Pupil, is the black circle which is an opening or window in the middle of your iris. It expands and contracts to control how much light gets into your eye. The scara, the white parts of your eye that surround the iris. Conjunctiva, a clear thin tissue that covers the scara and lines the inside of your eyelids. Lens, which sits behind the pupil. It focuses the light that comes into your eye and sends it to the back of your eye. Retina, a collection of cells that line the inside of the back of your eye. It is a part of your nervous system, the retina senses light and converts it into electrical impulses or neural signals. The retina has rods, cells that help you see in low light, and cones, cells that detect color. Macula, a small area that's part of the retina. It's responsible for central vision and helping you see fine details and color. The optic nerve, which is behind the retina. It carries signals from the retina to your brain, which then interprets that visual information to tell you what you are seeing. Muscles, which control your eye's position and movement, how much light gets into your eye and your eye's ability to focus. And finally, vitreous, a transparent gel that fills your entire eye. It protects and maintains the shape of the eye. The different parts of your eye work together to help you see images and send visual information to your brain. This process all happens extremely quickly when you look at an object. First, light enters your eye through the cornea and goes to your lens. Your pupil gets bigger and smaller to control the amount of light that gets into your eye. Your cornea and lens refract the light to bring what you see into focus. Light reaches the retina at the back of your eye, and the retina changes the images into electrical impulses or signals. Then the optic nerve transfers these signals to the part of your brain that's responsible for vision. Finally, your brain then interprets what you've seen. It combines the visual information from both eyes. There are hundreds of conditions, disorders, diseases and injuries that affect the eyes. Some conditions, such as uveitis, that causes eye pain. Others can lead to low vision or vision loss. About 12 million adults in the United States have some type of impaired vision. Your eyes change as you age. Many people get floaters and flashers. In some cases, cataracts, macular degeneration or a detached retina can occur as you get older. Presbyopia or losing near-focus vision usually starts to affect people around age 45. Many types of eye disease can affect the eyes, including congenital cataracts, glaucoma, and optic atrophy. Optic atrophy is a condition that affects the optic nerve. Optic atrophy is not a disease, but rather a sign of a potentially more serious condition. It results from damage to the optic nerve from many different kinds of pathologies. In the case of optic atrophy, something is interfering with the optic nerve's ability to transmit these impulses. Like a stroke of the optic nerve, known as anterior ischemic optic neuropathy. A tumor that is pressing on the optic nerve. Optic neuritis, 
which is an inflammation of the optic nerve caused by multiple sclerosis. Hereditary condition in which the person experiences loss of vision first in one eye and then in the other, known as labor's hereditary optic neuropathy, or simply an improper formation of the optic nerve, which is a congenital problem. Amblyopia, or lazy eye, occurs when one eye becomes weaker than the other during infancy or childhood. The brain favors the better eye, allowing the weaker eye to get worse over time. Early screening is important because treatment is more effective when started early. It is the most common reason for vision loss in kids, affecting 2% to 4% of children through the age of 15 years. It can occur even if a child has no noticeable problems. Amblyopia occurs when there is a major difference between the two eyes in their ability to focus. The most common cause of amblyopia is other vision problems. Its treatment is as simple as putting an eye patch or glasses. A sty is a painful red bump on the edge of your eyelid. It can look similar to an acne pimple. A sty forms when a tiny oil-producing gland in your eyelash follicle or eyelid skin becomes blocked and gets infected. There are two types of styes. External styes. They form on the outer part of either the upper or lower eyelid. External styes are the most common type and are usually caused by an infection in your eyelash follicle. Internal styes. These form on either of your inner eyelids. An internal sty is usually caused by an infection in the inner eyelid gland that produces oils that help keep your eyelid moist. Styes are very common and occur equally in all races and genders. However, styes may be more common in adults than children simply because the oil in an adult's oil glands is thicker than a child's, that means it's more prone to blockage. If you have certain conditions, such as blepharitis, dandruff, rosacea, diabetes or high levels of bad cholesterol, you're more at risk to develop a sty. And in most cases, a sty will go away by itself in several weeks. The cornea is the clear area in the center of the front of the eye through which we see. When the cornea is scratched, the injury is called a corneal abrasion. Most of the time, small corneal abrasions will heal in a few days. Even a small injury to the cornea can be very painful. You can give yourself a corneal abrasion without realizing it. This can happen when you try to take out a contact lens, but the lens is not actually on the eye. Rubbing a finger directly on the cornea can cause a small scrape. Corneal abrasions usually heal without causing any other problem. Even after the original injury is healed, however, the surface of the cornea is sometimes not as smooth as before. Some people who have had a corneal abrasion notice that the eye feels irritated again sometime after the abrasion heals. This feeling may be a sign of trouble with the corneal epithelium, a thin layer of cells on the surface of the cornea. These cells are important for the healing of corneal abrasions. Any spot where the cells do not grow back to protect the surface of the cornea results in irritation. When the cells keep growing back and then slipping off again, it is called recurrent corneal erosion. This problem can develop days or even years after the initial injury. Retinal detachment, or a detached retina, is a serious eye condition. The retina, the layer of tissue in the back of the eye, pulls away from tissues supporting it. Sudden changes, including eye floaters and flashes and darkening side vision, are signs this may be happening. A detached retina needs treatment as soon as possible. It happens to a layer of tissue called the retina that lines the back of the eye. It involves the retina pulling away from tissues supporting it. Retinal detachment often happens spontaneously or suddenly. The risk factors include age, nearsightedness, history of eye surgeries or trauma, and family history of retinal detachments. The three causes of retinal detachment are Regmatogenous retinal detachment is the most common cause of retinal detachment, and it happens when there's a small tear in your retina. 
eye fluid called vitreous can travel through the tear and collect behind the retina. It then pushes the retina away, detaching it from the back of your eye. This type of detachment usually happens as you get older. As the vitreous shrinks and thins with age, it pulls on the retina, tearing it. Tractional. Scar tissue on the retina can pull it away from the back of the eye. Diabetes is a common cause of these retinal detachments. The prolonged high blood sugar can damage blood vessels in your eye and that can result in scar tissue formation. The scars and areas of traction can get bigger, pulling and detaching the retina from the back of the eye. Exudative. When fluid builds up behind the retina even though there's no retinal tear. And as the fluid collects, it pushes your retina away. The main causes of fluid buildup are leaking blood vessels or swelling behind the eye, which can happen from such causes as uveitis. Surfer's eye, or pterygium is a raised fleshy triangular-shaped growth on your eye's conjunctiva. Your conjunctiva is the clear membrane that covers the white of your eye. The conjunctiva normally ends at the clear part of your eye, the cornea. It also lines the inside of your eyelids. The nickname surfer's eye comes from the idea that surfers work in the same elements that cause pterygium, like sun, wind and dusty conditions. And it is important to notice that long-term exposure to UV light is the main cause for surfer's eye. Pterygium is not cancer. However, it can grow large enough to cover part of your cornea. When this happens, it can affect your vision. And in rare cases, pterygium can scar your cornea. Also without treatment, you may lose vision. Your eyes may be red, swollen, and irritated in mild cases. If pterygium grows, your vision may be blocked or blurred. Treatments include symptom-relieving eye drops and ointment to surgery if your vision is affected.